Today we're looking at the long dute fig, more specifically the main crop. This is a French variety whose name literally translates to the long of August. And that long part refers to the shape of the breba, uh, which is much more elongated than the main crop you're seeing here. I don't have a uh, breba today, but I will make a separate video for that. Uh, the main crop will start out small and green like this, swelling to quite a large size as you see there, and then eventually reducing in size some and also turning a darker color when it ripens. This tree is in its second season for me. It has grown with medium vigor. Uh, it stands uh, over six feet tall, um, maybe, maybe even six and a half. The branches are growing uh, mostly upward but not always uh, super straight sometimes taking little turns the leaves are an interesting shape you can see almost uh, seven lobes there depending on how you count them uh, definitely definitely a, a somewhat unique shape to them this fig is very popular in short season climates because it'll reliably fruit there and uh, Breba are quite large. As it is also known by some other names. In uh, some German-speaking countries, it may be known as uh, Norland. All right, let's uh, pick the ripe fig we have here and see what it looks like inside. Here's the fig that I've picked today. It weighs 48 grams. I typically count 50 grams and higher as large in my climate. So this is just on the cusp of that. My guess is that the main crop will typically be in that range and that the Brabo will be a bit heavier and firmly in the large category. As you can see, the skin all around is a brownish, greenish color, maybe some yellows in there as well. Uh, and then towards the eye, it does get a little darker. The fig is very soft to the touch and feels like a bag of jelly in my hands. Um, I'm actually I'm a bit afraid that it might be overripe at this point, but there's only one way to find out, so let's cut it open. Here's the fig cut open. It has a slightly darker red interior than I was expecting, and again, I'm still a bit afraid that it might be overripe, but let's try a piece and see um, how it tastes. So good news, uh, this is a very ripe fig, but not a spoiled one, so I'm certainly happy about that. The texture was a bit gelatinous though, because of the ripeness. So I might try to pick it a day sooner next time just to see how that changes things. The fig does pack considerable seed crunch and certainly more than a lot of other varieties I've had. So that's something interesting to note as well. Uh, the taste is very sweet and I'd say that's the primary note to take away, just a strong uh, sweet flavor. But there are also some uh, berry notes in there as well. And that was a bit of a surprise as other reviews I had watched or read mostly mentioned uh, melon flavors. I didn't sense those at all, but there's various things that go into determining the flavor of a fig, uh, namely climate and ripeness level, etc. So I don't think that's something to read too much into. Uh, so in summary, for me, it's a very strong sweetness with some berry flavors. Certainly one worth keeping in the collection because of its size and the fact that it produces two reliable crops each year. For those in cooler climates, uh, I would certainly recommend this one because you're going to get large figs, tasty figs in, during your growing season. All right, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.